New York's Classic Rock, Q1043. Happy Mother's Day, all. And today is not only Mother's Day. I should point out that May is Mental Health Awareness is so, so critical, especially now during the pandemic. People are really hurting, but kids are really hurting. And that's why I invited Trish Glowacki and Angela Cohen to join me today. Trish is a founder of Glow Media Project. Angela is a producing director, and also she's the founder of Charlie Bear Productions. Now, what Glow Media Project does, I, I had not heard of them. I think it was Angela who had reached out um, to us, actually to Kenny Dashow, and then he turned the email over to me. So teen suicide has become astoundingly scary, profound, and more common than ever before, particularly now during the pandemic. Close to a third of teenagers suffer from anxiety disorder. And, you know, kids not having the perspective that adults have, they don't have that perspective of what they feel now does not necessarily mean that is what they'll feel forever. What Glow Media Project does is produce short films, because we all have short attention spans these days, <laughs> but short films that address these issues to teens. So first of all, Trish and Angela, welcome. And, and Trish, how did you, I know this was a long road that that, that brought you to this point, if you feel comfortable talking about it, because I know it's very painful. We're starting at a painful moment. Sure, thanks, Shelley. Um, and to celebrate Mother's Day, um, I guess my journey started as a mother um, of, uh, I have three children. Um, my two older sons um, struggled with uh, mental health challenges, anxiety, de depression, and learning differences. And my second son, Charlie, um, sadly died of an Oxycontin overdose um, when he was 20 years old, um, one week shy of his 21st birthday. And uh, as you can imagine, um, it was a very, very, very tough time for me. Um, but I have a background in uh, children's theater and musical theater. And um, my surviving son, George, is a musician. Um, so, and my son, Charlie, was a thespian. He, he was debating between um, declaring a, as a drama major or a computer science major. He was either going to please mom or dad, not both. But anyway, didn't, um, didn't make it that far. But anyway, so I, uh, in the wake of Charlie's death, um, I wrote a short uh, film musical, actually, uh, about the dangers of prescription medicine misuse, um, titled Warning, Take Only as Directed. My son, George, co-wrote the music with me and um, a couple other, uh, another dear friend who was one of Charlie's childhood teachers. Um, we recorded um, the music in LA. We filmed the, the, um, the short film in Maryland, just outside Washington, DC. And that film was released in 2014. To date, it's been, it's been viewed over 1 million times. Wow. Yeah. Um, and in touring that film in 2014, the, the main question educators had for us was, what else do you have? This is such a wonderful medium. This is just such a fresh approach to um, these, this very difficult subject. Anyway, so we did surveys and um, incorporated as the Glow Media Project in 2016. And we now have five short films address, uh, addressing topics ranging from anxiety and depression to eating disorders. Um, Angela has just uh, finished rewriting our script on suicide prevention, which we will be filming this summer. We will be at, I think we'll have seven short films by the end of the year. It's going very well. Angela, how did you become interested in this project in particular? Because you come from a background of acting, writing, directing, but this is so specific and so specialized. 
Yeah, this is, well, mental health is a topic that's really important to me. I'm an advocate. I made a film uh, entitled Without Grace that was based on a true story of people who were very dear to me. And it was a conversation on the intersection of mental health and family and is there ever a time to let go? And it was a very difficult topic to broach, but one that I felt I had to tell as a storyteller in order to find empathy for the people who were going through it to create a conversation around social change because it's such a stigmatized topic. And there's so much advocacy yet so much silence regarding it because there's a lot of shame. And I think it's really important that when we talk about these difficult situations and when we, we put them on film, people start to feel less alone in the world and they feel like they can open up and have a dialogue with one another. And I think that dialogue really creates healing. So that film was led by an incredible cast starring Ann Dowd and The Handmaid's Tale, which is back now, Aunt Lydia. She's an mm -hmm. Emmy winner for that show. And John Doman, who's just a consummate actor and myself. I was so excited to work with um, Anne as a mentor and a colleague, and John, and uh, wonderful director, Deborah Kampmeyer, incredible producers. And uh, we were just really lucky to make a film uh, with so many passionate people around it. So that topic uh, being that important to me, I was then introduced to Trish as a potential colleague and collaborator, and we hit it off right away. And obviously suicide prevention is very important to me. We addressed that and without grace, but also, um, mental health awareness and that takes us now into you know prevention month and awareness month and we've just created a PSA on uh, creatively coping with COVID which is focused on teens telling us their stories throughout the years we've throughout the year rather we've been interviewing them for a documentary that we're making as well and um, just showing some some empathy some collaboration some creative strands we've noticed that kids are really reaching, excuse me, reaching for um, creative tools to help them get through this very difficult time. And it was a wonderful um, sort of epiphany that we had making the cinema verite style film because we didn't know these kids beforehand. They responded to us in such a vulnerable and open way and sent us videos of painting and music and uh, film and drama and, anything you could think of, uh, making baskets, just underwater basket weaving, Shelly. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> well, how do people, how do kids see these films? How do you distribute them? How do people have access? Well, we actually, we are very fortunate. We are a completely donor-driven nonprofit organization. So we do not charge for our films or our guides. They're all available free of charge on the website, glowmedia.org. It's G-L-O-W uh, media.org. And our films come with um, full curriculum for educators, parents, guardians, and students. And we collaborate with experts in the field of adolescent psychology and psychiatry and uh, experts in the specific topic um, that we are addressing so that we have the most accurate, up-to-date um, materials available. For instance, with the suicide prevention film, we are collaborating with um, National Institutes of Mental Health here in um, the DC area. And um, one of their leading suicidologists has um, reviewed our script and given us some guidelines and, and whatnot. So we're very fortunate that we have um, very interested people are interested in our work and they want to help and they want to make sure that we get it right and we want to get it right so that our films are used. Are school districts and individual schools reaching out? Yes, yes. We're in um, LAUSD, which is in Los Angeles, the second largest school district in the country. Um, they um, partnered with us on our first film, Warning, Take Only as Directed, and they've since picked up all of our other films um, uh, and other just kind of random school districts. Um, we have one in New York, we have some in the DC area, which is where I'm based, um, Davenport, Iowa. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think of the Florida district. Anyway, 
they're available to anybody and everybody. And one of the ways in which we distribute them is through the um, subscription series, educational su subscription series, which are provided by um, companies such as Discovery. Um, that's how we got the million views of Warning Take Only as Directed. Discovery has had that film now for six years. And uh, another company called Infobase, which is a direct competitor to um, Discovery, they've picked up all of our other films and um, gaining fantastic traction. We've done a couple of Facebook Lives with them and um, virtual conventions this year and conferences. But um, you know, prior to this year, we would go to mental health conferences and whatnot to spread the word. The goal I, of our collaboration really is to expand that. So at this point, we want to take Glow on the road and make it more commercial so that that conversation can be opened on a, on a larger scale, not just in the schools. And so that's why we produced the PSA, which is also running on PBS SoCal now and has a stamp of approval from SAMHSA. And we're going to be partnering with MTV for their Mental Health Action Day coming up later in the month, which we're really excited about. And then in making the documentary that will release the end of this year and do a festival circuit, and then hopefully have a, a larger release uh, distribution wise. And then again, um, moving in that direction to engage kids in the schools because that's where they're going every day, but then also to open it up to the families and the homes where they can have these conversations with their loved ones at, at night as well. I am speaking to Trish Glowacki and Angela Cohen of Glow Media Project. They have, they're going to have seven, they already have several, but they have, they're going to have seven short films that address mental health issues specifically facing teenagers today and may is Mental Health Awareness Month. What have you two been hearing throughout the pandemic about the, it, it just seems the need has never been greater. And as I said before, particularly with teens who don't have the perspective that this, this too shall pass. Yes, we've been hearing a lot of that from educators. And in particular, educators are reaching out because they know that our resources are available online. And since they aren't in school, or, or a lot of people are not in person school, they, that they're just so grateful to have something that they can, uh, you know, assign to the students and say, okay, this just check out this film, do the curriculum. Here, are the, here's the lesson plan and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I think mental health has generally been on the back burner in most um, edu school systems. Not, not anymore. Um, and the documentary that Angela and I are working on right now is is going to be a wonderful tool when the when the children are back in the classroom to sort of just remind them, hey, we all went through this together. This is how a few a few teens made it through. You were not alone. Again, reducing the stigma and the shame around any sort of um, mental health challenge. Again, if you're listening and you're interested, it's glowmedia.org because I know people who are listening are going to say, well, how can I get these short films? And when you have the curriculum, is there a curriculum specifically for parents? Because for a parent to have this conversation, how difficult is that? It, it, it's very difficult for the parents. And that's why we have three guides in the curriculum. And one is uh, ideally the films would be taught in, over a two- uh, two class period, usually in a health class, and a letter and the uh, parent or guardian curriculum would be sent home prior to the students viewing the film. So the parents see what what the film is about, the topics addressed, the um, lesson plan, etc. And it's meant for them to start the conversation in the home prior to the student viewing. And again, if you'd like more information, because we've run out of time, glowmedia.org. Check it out. Take it to your school, your school district, glowmedia.org. Thank you so much, Trish and Angela, for doing this. This is just a godsend. If you missed any part of this conversation, you can download the iHeartRadio app. It is free. And all of my conversations from Sunstein Sunday end up on the podcast, Sunstein 
15 sessions. And again, that is free. And I will be seeing, well, virtually, kind of, sort of, you'll be hearing me tomorrow morning on the Jim Kerr Rock and Roll Morning Show, Q104.3. New York's classic rock, Q104.3.